choice is yours. Either try to outdraw me or turn around and ride out of here while you're still alive. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, good morning, Mr. Paladin. Oh, hello, hey boy, I didn't expect you to be at the desk this morning. Oh, yes, sir, our desk clerk asked me to stay here while he have breakfast. Uh, why are you up so early? Couldn't sleep. Thought I'd pick up the newspaper and have breakfast in the dining room. Oh, I was coming up to your room when uh, desk clerk returned. The telegram for you oh. arrived a few minutes ago. Here. Thank you. I have newspapers all sorted. I get them. No, uh, just the uh, San Francisco paper for now, hey boy. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, here's the Alta California. Uh, not much interesting news in paper today, Mr. Paladin. He's uh. Telegram interesting? Yes, yeah, very. Do you remember Lola Blackwood? Lola Blackwood? Oh, yes, sir. Very famous actress who stays at Carlton when she comes to play at California Theatre. Very nice lady friend of Mr. Paladin. Hey, boy, not see her for a long time. Ah, uh, uh, she coming back? No. No, she retired from the theatre about a year ago. Oh, that too bad. I did not know. Lovely lady as Miss Blackwood should always be seen by many people. Um, well, why she sent telegram? Say she needs help. Wants me to come at once. Oh, you go? Yes, as soon as I pack. Hey, boy, send answer to telegram? No, just get me a seat on the next stage to Sacramento. <laughs> partners, I'm going to explain the difference between ordinary stereo phonographs and Columbia Stereo One. Listen to an oil well on ordinary stereo. Now listen to it on Columbia Stereo One. Man, there's a real thousand barrel a day sound. The difference is Columbia's stupendous stereo projection, not just a couple of speakers shooting in different directions. Columbia gives you the real thing. Fills every inch of the room with all the sound and feeling of a live performance. And I mean a Texas-sized room. Man, ain't that the prettiest money-making sound? I, I mean, uh, get down to your Columbia phonograph dealer and ask. Demand to hear Stereo One by Columbia. Why, they start as low as $39.95 for portables, $129.95 for consoles. Somebody cap that well, we're losing a fortune. In Sacramento, I rented a horse and started on my journey to the town of Grass Valley. It had been over a year since I had last heard from Lola Blackwood. She had written a letter that time, telling me that she was tired of touring the country as an actress and had decided to buy a ranch and settle down in Grass Valley. So my ride along the American River to the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas was filled with thoughts of this beautiful woman. When I tied my horse to the hitch rail outside the Grass Valley Hotel, I noticed a carriage standing alongside the boardwalk a few yards down the street. Sitting in the carriage with a young girl was the lovely Lola Blackwood. Paladin! Lola! Oh, Paladin, oh. how delightful to see Lola, you. Lola, it's so good to see you, too. Oh, this is wonderful. It's been such a long time. It's been almost two years. You mean two centuries. I was in San Francisco, and I was playing Ophelia. I remember, and there wasn't a dry handkerchief in the California theater. Oh, I just can't believe it's Lola. really you. Oh, Paladin, I want you to meet Laurie Gallagher. Hello, Laurie. How do you do, Mr. Paladin? I'm sure Laurie feels that she already knows you. Oh, Aunt Lola's told me so many wonderful things about you. Well, Laurie, your Aunt Lola is a very gracious lady, but I'm afraid she's forgotten to tell me that she had such a beautiful niece. Oh, well, I'm not really her niece. Laurie has been living with me for several months, Paladin, ever since her mother passed away. Oh. She and her mother traveled with our company, and before she died, they came to live with me. I promised her I'd take care of Laurie. I see. 
And I suppose you're going to be an actress too, Laurie? Oh, yes, sir. I'm working very hard at it. A natural-born actress. I'm very proud of her. She's almost 13 now. In another two years, you may have the good fortune to see a perfect Juliet at your California theater. Certainly. She'll be just the right age for the part. <laughs> yes. Oh, I just can't get over this delightful surprise. What brings you into Grass Valley? Well, your telegram. My what? You sent me a wire asking me to come. Well, there must be some mistake. I'm afraid I don't understand, Lola. Here. Here's the wire I received. Let me see that. Need your help desperately. Most urgent you come to Grass Valley. Signed Lola Blackwood. Well, I didn't send this. And who did? I've no idea. Huh. Well, there's one way to find out who sent it. How, Mr. Paladin? I'll go to the wireless office and get a verification from their files. Uh, Aunt Lola, why don't you ask Mr. Paladin to stay with us while he's here? Now, Laurie, maybe Mr. Paladin would rather stay in town. I'm sure it'd be much too dull for him at the ranch. Oh, here comes Boone. Oh. Well, who is this man, Lola? Why, Boone, I... This is Mr. Paladin, an old friend of mine from San Francisco. Paladin, this is Boone Caldwell. How do you do? You're a long way from San Francisco. What brings you here? Business trip. Not much business in Grass Valley for a man who wears his gun like that. Boone. It's a peaceful town. And I'm a peaceful man. Lola, you ready to go back to the ranch? Yes, Boone. Mm -hmm. Lola, I'll ride out to see you tonight after I check on this telegram. Oh, was well, that maybe you, you said, did. mister? I said I would be paying my respects to Miss Blackwood this evening. You may as well know Miss Blackwood and I are going to be married. Her old friends won't be welcome at the ranch anymore. But Mr. Paladin isn't just an old friend. He's someone very special oh, to have, Lola. Oh, sit still, youngster, and be quiet. Boone Caldwell. Well, she makes me fidgety, Lola. Kids should be seen, not heard. What Laurie said was true. And Mr. Paladin will be welcomed at my ranch any time he so desires. Lola, those are my decisions to make now, not yours. You understand, Paladin? I'm afraid I don't. Stay away from Lola. I can't make it any clearer than that. All right, get it. Come on. Howdy. Hello. If you want to send a wire, just write it out on one of these forms. No, thanks. I came in to ask you if you might remember who sent me this telegram. It came to me in San Francisco three days ago. Well, it says right here, Lola Blackwood. But did she come into this office to send it? Well, she'd have to. The only telegraph office in town. But do you actually remember her coming in? Well, now that you mention it, I, I don't think she did. Seems I recall that little girl that lives with Miss Blackwood. Uh, what's her name? Lori. Yeah, that's the one, Lori. I remember now. She came in here with this message already printed on a piece of paper. Told me Miss Blackwood would pay the charge later. No, don't bother Miss Blackwood with the charges. This should take care of it. Well, yes, sir. It sure does. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should because... There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter. And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. Filter blend means fine tobacco, filter blend up front. And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. Filter blend is a mighty good reason for you to smoke Winston. Because it means tobacco specially processed for filter smoking. A Winston secret. You get Winston's own pure white modern filter, plus the rich, delightful flavor of fine tobacco. There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter. And the fun you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. And makes Winston taste good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Thank you. 
At the Grass Valley Hotel, I learned that Boone Caldwell was a professional gambler and controlled the gaming tables at the Red Dog Saloon. I wanted to talk to Lola alone, so before I rode out to visit her, I stopped by the saloon to see if Boone was there. He was, busy at the tables. Twenty minutes later, I pulled up at the ranch house. Ooh, ooh, no. Paladin. Hmm. Laurie, go find Ching Hao. He can help us take him in the house. But what happened? Laurie, please hurry. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Paladin, can you hear me? Lola, somebody, somebody took a shot at me. A bullet creased your forehead, just above the eye. Yeah, I can feel it. Can you stand up? I think so. Let me help you. No, 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 no. No, I'm all right. We'd better go in the house. Wait a minute. Listen. The man who shot me is probably on that horse. I'm going after him. Paladin, wait. Don't go. Paladin, I know who it is. You? Who? Come inside. We can talk there. Lola told me that a man named Judd had probably done the shooting. He had been hired by Boone to watch over the place at night while Boone was working in town. Before I could learn more, we were interrupted by Laurie and the Chinese cook, Ching Hao. Laurie was pleased to see that I no longer needed assistance, and she proceeded to apply a bandage to my forehead. Lola asked Ching Hao to make some coffee, and then she took Laurie upstairs to get her ready for bed. A few minutes later, she returned, carrying a tray from the kitchen. Coffee's ready. Oh, good. Hmm. Laurie asleep? Not yet. She's such an excitable child. How does your head feel? (laughs) Much better, thanks to her nursing care. Well, this coffee should help, too. Thank you. You're both very considerate. (laughs) I'm not used to this kind of treatment away from San Francisco. Uh, If things were different, we could be much more hospitable. Mm. Lola, what's between you and Boone Caldwell? Are you really going to marry him? No. At one time I was, but not now. Uh, I didn't think so. He's a despicable man. If I ever hated anyone, God forgive me, I hate him. Laurie despises him. It's so strange. Strange? Yes. Boone came into town several months ago. I met him then. He was very attentive to Laurie and to me. We loved him at the beginning. I was having financial trouble at the time. What money I had left was dwindling away, so I decided to put the ranch up for sale, but nobody wanted to buy. Boone said that since we were going to be married anyway, that he would make the mortgage payments and take over the bookkeeping. I was very thankful when he did. I never was very good at bookkeeping. How did it work out under his management? The ranch worked out fine, but Laurie and I didn't do so well. I'm afraid he owns most of the ranch now. And this is what made you dislike him so much? Well, it happened gradually. He changed. Started treating Laurie like she didn't belong here. Wanted to send her away to a foundling home back east. I begged him out of that. It got so that he would tell me every move I should make. After a while, I knew I, I could never be possessed by anyone like him. And then you should get away. Leave. You could always go back with the touring company. Laurie would love that. I told Boone I was going to. But he's threatened to kill me if I ever try it. We couldn't get ten miles out of this valley without him knowing about it. He's got his man Judd watching us whenever he can't be here. There's no use, Paladin. We're prisoners until Boone gets tired of us and leaves. That's my only hope. Someone's riding up out front. Must be Judd and Boone. I could have guessed Judd would go tell him you were here. I'll go outside and meet him. No, Paladin. They'll try to kill you. Stay in here, and I'll see that you leave peaceably. There's no use in your getting hurt because of my troubles. They're my troubles, too, now, Lola. Now, have you forgotten the the bandage on my forehead? (laughs) 
constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolate at Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is Exlax in your medicine cabinet? Hello, Boone. I told you this afternoon to stay away from Lola. I heard you say something like that before you rode away. But you didn't wait long enough for me to give you my answer. Get on your horse and clear out of here. I'm not going to waste any more words on you, Pellet. Your friend Judd doesn't like to waste words either. You ambush everybody who walks to this door after sundown, Judd? I wasn't trying to shoot you, mister. That was only to scare you off. You're lucky you did hit me. Otherwise, you wouldn't have lived long enough to ride in after Boone. Paladin, get off this ranch. No, Boone. I won't be leaving. You will. Get on your horses and move out. Both of you. Nobody talks to me like that. All right, Judd, take him. Don't you try it, Judd. <laughs> Killed him. Didn't even give him a chance to draw. He reached for his gun. And just a cold-blooded killer. Well, I've taken care of men like you before. I believe you. Professional gamblers usually know how to take care of themselves. So? My gun is back in its holster if you want to try to outdraw me. There's no other way, is there? It's up to you. Make your choice. My advice is to turn around and ride out of here while you're still alive. Paladin, I don't need your advice. Paladin? It's all right, Lola. Is he dead? Both of them. I'm so afraid for you. I'm sorry you had to get mixed up with my troubles. I wouldn't have come here if I hadn't wanted to. I'm grateful, Paladin. You can thank Lori. Lori? She sent me the telegram. The te... I've forgotten about the wire. How... Oh, oh Lori. Poor Lori. Why do you say that? She must never know, Paladin. Boone was her father. Her father? Yes. Boone left her mother before Laurie was born. Her mother gave me a picture of him before she died. Told me to destroy it so that Laurie would never see it. I kept the picture for a while. It wasn't until after I'd fallen in love with Boone that I remembered to get rid of it. I hardly recognized him from the photograph at first. The years had changed him so much. But I knew it was he. Did you ask him about it? Yes, but he denied everything. Said he was never married, never knew Laurie's mother. After that, he started showing his hatred for the child. I realized then what kind of a man he really was. But it was too late to do anything about it. Aunt Lola? I'd better go in and tell her what's happened. Don't let her know about Boone. Don't worry, Lola. I won't. Good morning.
morning, Miss Wong. Oh, Miss Pilotan, welcome home. Uh, you come back last night? Yes, the stage didn't get in till almost midnight. Oh, you had a nice trip? Mm, very nice. Oh, <laughs> please, excuse Miss Wong. I will be back to finish making up your bed in a few minutes. Where are you going? To get another girl to help me, Swang. When I bend over to make up bed, my head becomes very dizzy. Well, is something wrong? D don't you feel all right? I think so, but Miss Wong's head is all filled with champagne. <laughs> champagne? Yes, uh, We had a big birthday party for Honorable Aunt last night. Miss Wong drink too much champagne. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Mm-hmm. Was Hayboy at the party? Oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And how does he feel this morning? I do not know. He not come to work yet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He must have had a lot of champagne, too. Yes, sir. Much more than Miss Wong. Maybe he dizzy this morning, too? Mm -hmm. More than likely. Oh, likely. Knowing Hayboy, I wouldn't expect him to come to work at all today. Oh. Poor Hayboy. Now, here's a word from MGM star Debbie Reynolds. Hi, this is Debbie Reynolds with just about the biggest entertainment news since, well, since the movie. It's Look Magazine's special issue all about crowded, incredible, crazy, mixed-up California. The new issue of Look, the one that's out right now, is jam-packed with all kinds of interesting things about California. The people, fashions, apartments, politics, sports, Hollywood. Look has covered everything from champagne-making to religion in California. Let's see, there's a full color section on the latest styles, an article about new adult movies and Hollywood's production code. There's a picture story about California's boom in apartment living. Take a tip from me, Debbie Reynolds. Just for the fun of it, pick up a copy of the big special California issue of Look Magazine. You'll like Look. That was Debbie Reynolds, who stars with Glenn Ford in the fun-filled MGM picture It Started With a Kiss, now at your favorite theater. Don't miss it. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Mr. Paris. Featured in the cast were Norma Jean Nielsen, Lawrence Dobkin, Tim Graham, and Jean Bates. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>